Thanks very much. And it's the organizer. It's, it's great. Um, I'd like to talk about some fun work with the Comic Con at all. Um, thanks very much. Uh, we're we're um, sort of doing teaching you new things about oxygen groups that we didn't know before. So um, basically, I'm gonna, I'm going to focus on this talk on relatively just what you need everything you need to work for our great oxygen group. Um, so famously, um, as I had a talk of their presentation, I I know by me by by town. Um, so the generators are as I. The I inside the set S, which is between the present group. And with this one, and I'm going to write down the presentation that I need to talk about as you know it. So you have the quadratic relation, and then you also have the great relations. Um, I'll mention that this is also a presentation for the uh, the group algebra of the symmetric group. Now, so the story that I want to tell, the group algebra of the symmetric group is actually the least useful pedagogical tool, and I need to do with several variants of the group algebra of the symmetric group. So bear with me, most of these variants um, have already appeared um, inside of this uh, workout. So the first variant that I'm going to not have, this is the star line. And then the star monoid, and, and all of these variants, you can form the quadratic relation and the great relation function. So then you have a quadratic relation that I think the star product is that it's not this guy is um, The third variant is the no opposite algebra, where I'm going to send all the generators capital VI. And uh, the new quadratic relation is that di is supposed to be zero. And of course, this is a monoid, but this you need an algebra to have an extra one. And of course, the three relation. Yes. And you know, there's more that I can look down here. Or heck, algebra, but for reasons of time, I will omit it. All of these variants are motivated by the geometry of black writings. And I'll talk about that motivation a little bit later on. Uh, many of you have seen this one, it's one of the less, less one of but it's still all motivated by the geography of black varieties. Is your star one saying zero hecka or just something? If you linearize it, it becomes a zero hecka. So all of these have a basis in my direction with mutations. Um, and and uh, most of you know how to do this, this is defined by taking reduced expression. Um, so if you have a word, Um, a word in the alphabet S, that's what I'm defining by an expression. And um, W is a reduced expression, and the word reduced expression shows up so often that I'm the short case of graphs. W is a reduced expression for an element of mutation. If we write it as a product, um, and moreover, this is the shortest way of doing so. No shorter words devices, and this defines our wave function. Very familiar stuff. Um, so now, in any of these variants, we can define our being this element. Uh, do I need this chair? Right? There is good. Um, so for any of these variants, I can define my uh, basis as follows. I can give it any word, for example, when you do a toxic example, I can define the D of the word to be the corresponding composition. <laughs> and um, uh, I, I define the D of W to be the other W whenever, whenever I know this. But this definition is not obvious that, that it's defined, but, but it is defined because of the theorem of Matsumoto, which says that any two rexes, any two reduced expressions for W are related by the brain versions. Do 
You don't need to use a quadratic relation to make something longer, and then again, it makes something shorter later on. You only need the variance. Since the regulation is holding all of these variants, that's all you need to extend the distance. So the idea is that all of these variants have the same behavior when you're talking about reduced expression, but they all behave differently when you're interested in interpreting non-reduced Okay. So suppose that we have some non-reduced expression like S, S, T, S, T, T, S, T um, in, in the center of the class three. How do we interpret that? What does that mean in our, in our algebra of model? So the usual way of describing what happens when we multiply um, is uh, by blocks around the constant group. And Webster did blocks around the, the outcodes in his talk. I want to point out that this is a great model for taking a basis of your algebra or of your or an enumeration of your, of your group model and talk about what happens when you write multiply by a gen. That's what this picture was for. It does not tell you what happens, how to multiply two elements, right? That's not what this picture is for. This picture just tells you how to take an element of your basis and multiply by on the right by a gen. So in the symmetric group S3, and this whole board is going to be like S3, S is going to be uh, what I call this one before, and T is what I call this two. And this is the uh, so called dual Coxeter complex, dual completed Coxeter complex. And to a word, a word is basically telling you, all right, I'll start at the identity, and when I take it, <laughs> go along the X ball, I see a T, go along the T ball, I see a T, go back along the T ball, I see another T, I see an S, S, and so forth. It tells me how to walk around this place. That's the normal symmetry. If I was in the star model, then I did S, and then I did S again, I end up right. I end up here again. So I want you to think that what I really do in my multiply by S is I go into the middle here, I'm on the highway, and then I decide which exit to take. And in the symmetric order, you always make the opposite exit from the start. But in the cost of your way, you always make the exit of the arrows to the right. And in the middle cost of your if you go onto the highway, that turns on the line that you described. And you know, <laughs> this is uh, the different ways you to interpret it. Me or her or that algebra, you would set up linear combinations. But for reduced expression, it's, it's always the same for all of these things. If you come in from the bottom and you follow a reduced expression of the arrows in the game, you just end up at the other end of the world. Now, Matsumoto's theorem tells you that any two um, reduced expressions are connected by the rate relation. So, this is of course one rate relation, which is indicating with a two cell. And there's only one thing that has multiple reduced expressions. And so this pattern is half the row of the way. Any questions? This should all be whole pattern. Okay. I do want to mention that um, reduced expressions, and I like the no algebra for a couple of good reasons, because in the no algebra, um, if I take the word and uh, it's not a reduced expression, then I get zero. So the reduced expression that sort of picked out exactly is the non-zero. Um, so what I want to do now is completely generalize this picture. And I want to generalize it to a category. So I want, and I'll tell you why I'm there, a category um, whose objects correspond to parabolic subgroups of my. And to it, so this parallel subgroup, I want to associate um, to this parallel subgroup. Uh, well, this is a subset of the parallel subset. This is the subgroup that it generates. Maybe I should write this I, I, and I, the subgroup of W that it generates. And um, in the symmetric group, uh, these parallel subgroups look like. Something like it's a product of smaller symmetric groups and two A, some of the I's, and that's your typical example of a parallel subgroup. I want to I want to mention that I took this sort for any operator, so I'm always making the assumption that I'm only allowing I such as this. Now we're going to say that again. Um, and then y has the longest element. So is the i finite or the parabolic is finite? So the is i finite or the parabolic? Uh, the parabolic is finite. Okay. 
So, um, what I believe is a category where deeds are the odd, that's sort of the moments of spaces. Um, so, what's the best way to do for it? I've worked like this in the States. Um, that'd be nice. Uh, so, what we want is that the home space from mine to J should have a basis in bijection with double consents for these parabolic subgroups. So those of you who uh, are using the symmetric group, if I'm looking at say S3 cross S2, and I'm looking for a double coset between uh, that and S1 cross S4 all inside the group S5, what I'm doing is I'm looking for some permutation um, where sort of no two turn into the same box cross twice. And such a permutation will have his own permutation, so they have a double percent. Um, but these are the minimal weight elements in double percents. They sort of franchise these. Three one, three one, one. Three. So what? You know through strength of sandbox cross one? Cross once, cross once, thank you. Cross it all, thank you. So that's an example of a non-trivial double percent. So the minimal representative. Okay, so we want this category to have its basis, and we want the the homes from the empty set to the empty set to be our previous algebra. Of course, it should have a basis in this way, it does. And um, the other thing that we want is that our generators correspond to sort of maps between a parallel subgroup and a bigger parallel subgroup. And indeed, you can do this sort of one by adding one reflection of. So I want a map which increases the size of my parabolic subgroup or decreases the size of my parabolic subgroup. For example, if I have the missing symbol or question here, then now I'm going to have this. This is the sort of structure that I want. And in this setting, I have this sort of old generator. But it would be S, a symbol or function. I now want to think that this corresponds to a composition of these new generators. Namely, I start at the empty set, I go to the parabolic subgroup S, and I go back to the empty set. Um, this is a composition of two of these generators, or five of the empty set. And I want this composition that generally works on the empty set to push with S. That's the sort of thing that I need. And I just want to point out that I'm going to use a shorthand for this, for, for these sort of uh, walks, walks around between different parallel uh, groups. We're going to write that, write that previously like this, or or maybe if I'm kind of that set of things, yes, then here's a subset of something. Any questions? So where does that live? Like what algebra? Uh, it's it's what I'm going to be defining. It's category. It's a category. Um, now, the thing though that I want you to think is that this composition is, is never going to be an invertible morphism. What I want you to think is that maybe, uh, you know, if any morphisms of empty set are like permutations, then what should a map from empty set to S, so like this map from empty set to S, is not a permutation, it's some map. From the set one of n to the set where I'm belongs together one and two in the blanc. Okay. And indeed it corresponds to the map that sort of merges one and two into the map of sets. And no such map is going to be invertible. You're never going to expect this to be invertible. And so as a result, um, if I wanted to like, take this literally and apply for the group algebra, the center group, it's not going to work because S is invertible, but it's not machine. Um, there's a way to make the group algebra this much work. Group work, you have to use a different permutation. You have to use the cosmos representation that was mentioned by Vanessa yesterday. I'm just going to omit that and say, okay, the group algebra of the symmetric group is the least useful thing to explain. I will talk about the other set. Apologize if that's uh, less familiar to me. I don't know how I'm going to really report it, but I'm doing this around for hours. So the three things that I have to do now, I have to, um, where are the resources? 
I have to, I have to, I have to um, describe how I find this category. I have to tell you why I'm doing it. And then I have to say some awesome theorems. So, 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 then, <laughs> yeah. so, so you have a morphism from anti to like parabolic, uh, like W. Is that map from empty to double parallel to the I and back? It's like that gives you the longest column in the parallel. Yes. So let me describe what this category is. I'm going to describe um, in the start of that this is the easiest one to explain. Okay. Um, so let me call the star variant this category. It's going to be noted as C, singular toxic. And what I'm going to do is I'm not going to tell you how to multiply things immediately. I'm going to tell you how generators act on a basis on the right. And so I told you there's a basis in my direction of double closed sets. I'm going to tell you how my generators act on a basis. And it's nicely and easily described. So suppose that I've got a double closed set. There's two parallel set groups, I and J. And I'm thinking this as a subset of the symmetric. Okay. Then there exists a unique bigger closet for I to join union S. And, and henceforth, I'm going to write I to join union S as an IS. So these cosets are typically much bigger than those cosets because this group is big, right? And um, there's a unique double coset that's in that. And that shouldn't make sense if you think about how the groups and cosets work. Um, and so what we're going to define is we're going to say that if I take I S, um, let me just make so I change. The left thing that is on um, um, that probably did left multiplication. I'm going to go left multiplication for a second, but it doesn't matter. The right multiplication works the same way. Sorry. There's a unique cube such that you can take this. So that's how things work when I increase the size of my process. Meanwhile, if I'm given a double coset here, and see with the different union of a whole bunch of double cosets um, for WJ and WI. And I'm going to say that when I make my things smaller, what I get is um, uh, what I get is the, the P such that uh, P is maximum amongst the I. Take the coset containing it, which is the maximum. The one way to say that is that every double coset contains a maximum element of the group order, a unique maximum element of the group order. And I take the double coset, which has the same maximum. Now I'm going to do this. So, what do I have here? In this picture, I have drawn for you all double cosets, where on one side I've got the trivial group. And on the other side, I've got some parallel symmetry. So these are just one sided okay. And in, in, in black, I've got for you all the empty set, empty set coefficients, which is just one set, one point sets that elements of W. And in red, I've got for you the X coefficients. Okay. And X is a couple number of miles. So these are the red things are W and the symmetry of the three modulo S. Now, what happens if I start at the host set and then I, and this is an empty set, empty set, I'm going to multiply by a joint of empty set S. I'm supposed to take the, the host set continue. Now, I multiply by going from S back to empty set. There's two host sets that are contained inside this. I think the one with the maximal, say that bigger than the recovery. Now, I go back to S. Now, I go from empty set to S again. I'm going to go to the, the double host set. Now I go to ST, and I add T to my double coset. Now I've got an ST double coset, okay? which there's only one ST coset, which is everything. That's the whole group. You want to the point, and, and so forth. So I can just ask the notation that that S on the front 
This is the, the set is between two elements. Is it I do not understand. The code set is one in S, the set one and S. Yeah, this is an element of S3 modulo. Uh, um, so basically, in all examples, if you, I, I want to point out that there's one thing if you start this code set, this is a, a T code set on the right, and I added this right under the C code set. So you can move along this column. Here, instead of the picture for things which are S3 modulo, S modulo something. So here is the double close set for S on the left and S on the right. Here is the double close set for S on the left and anything set on the right. They're the same as set, but they're different because they're looking different on Okay. Yeah, these two are sets of the same as that. But one of them lives inside S3 modulo S modulo S, which is a hom one hom space in the set. And this lives inside S3 modulo S modulo empty set, modulo triple. And that lives in a different hom space. They represent different. So I told you how to take a double code set and multiply by generator to say make the code set bigger or make the code set small. Um, I haven't told you how to take two code sets and arbitrary and multiply them together. And I don't want to talk about that too much. So I'll just quickly say as a creative thing, um, what I've actually defined for you is actually the only envelope in the star model. The item codes inside the star model layer. Correspond to the longest elements of parallel subgroups. And, and this is literally just the thing for the end of the Great. So, what are we going to do next? We're going to talk about reduced space. So, what is an expression? Expression is a word in our generators. But our generators are just like paths around the this like subset, collection of subsets of the simple reflections. So we can just instead of keeping track of a, a word of path of, of arrows, I can just keep track of a path. So expression is the sequence of parabolic subsets. All of these are subsets of S. Where I I is one is either I is going to be an S or I removing an S. You can either add something or remove it. That's um, a double bit of the right. And it gives you a walk around that sum graph. I can assign a length. Is that an expression? Um, so the length of going from I to I S is the length going the other way. These are equal. And both of these are going to be defined um, as the difference of the lengths of the longest elements. So the length of J, I just shorthand, for the length of the longest element of J, the mutual length function. The length of the length is the length of the relative longest. That gives you the length of an expression. Um, we also have the length of a double coset. So if I have an element of this double coset, then the length of the heat I'm going to define to be the usual length of the maximal element, maximal in the Dirac order. And then I'm going to double that. And then subtract the length of I. Yeah. That's what I'm going to be defining the length of the post that should be. A little bit not obvious why this should be the right answer. Follow this. 
Um, and I would mention that when I and J are both of the empty set, so that double quotes are just elements of the symmetric group, what I've done, this is zero and this is zero. So what I have to define is twice zero. Okay. The length of the coset containing W is going to be twice the usual length. That's just my convention. And that convention makes sense because before I would not let I asked that as a but now to get there, I have to two points. P bar is the top order in the order? Yes. Okay. Just to check this length, but P also depends on the choice of cortex, right? The same way you may say. Yeah, these two things have different lengths. Um, now, finally, I'll also note that is P contains the identity elements, and P is a double coset for the same parallel on either side. This is actually going to be the identity element of my Hom space. Okay, so this P is the identity of Hom inside this category, and the length of P is going to be a good thing to have. So, um, you may guess where I'm going next. How, how do you get that other stuff from here? Uh, the long, maximal element of P is going to be the longest element of W. Okay. So, I is reduced to P. If starting at um, the identity of say i zero. So if I start at i zero and then I keep uh, and I work my way up from there, I end up at whatever goes at p. Then the length of p is equal to the length of this expression. Let me go back to this example for a second. According to my length formula, whenever I go from empty set to task program, this is also length one. The longest element here has length three, three minus one and two. So these have length two. And so this is the path only going of length three, like five. This host has length five, one, two, three, four, five, all of those. One, three, zero, four, three, six, five, six, six. Um, one, two, three, four, five. That's the length five expression for something that's one, three, so that's not reduced. These dots are very interesting because they're actually not reduced in either direction. So that doesn't um, in the normal house. Pretty much. Um, there's like eight different equivalents. I'm allowed to go from the wall off the wall, but I'm not allowed to go back on the wall or back to the end of the side. So that would be increasing with the key this wall. So, for example, this hat is not reduced because it goes back to this wall, and this hat is not reduced because it goes back to this wall. Um, I'll just quickly, for those of you who like lamps, and there's many people who like lamps in the office, it's an edge. You can draw its right. Webs. So uh, a web is some sort of trivalent graph built up out of labeled edges, labeled by positive numbers. And you're allowed to split and merge it with B into A and B. And then I think you need to build out of these rectangles. Um, so if I look in the old perspective at STS, people who are used to drawing string diagrams will sort of immediately draw STS like this, where I first multiply by S, which is the possible number of two trans, and by T, and by S. But the new way to do this is to say first I take one and two and merge it into the wall one two, I'll take this two. Then I unmerge it again, 
merge, converge, merge, converge. And I'm reading this from bottom to top as a list of parabolic summers. So I start with F1 cross F1 cross S1, the trivial group, and then I go to S2 cross S1, and then back to S1 cross S1 cross S1, so this empty set S, empty set, and so forth. And so forth. In this new perspective, though, we also have things like, so I would take M set S, ST, and that would be drawn, I go from S1 cross S1 plus S1 to S2 cross S1, and then I merge these into S3. You don't need, that was the description of the category. Now I'm going to move on to the motivation. So unfortunately, it is easy to discuss the definition, sorry, the motivation for this talk in terms of the no algebra. algebra. It's kind of in terms of the Dharma uh, layer. Just because people are more familiar with homology than K3. Um, so let me just quickly talk about the geometric setup. I'm trying to make this as fast as possible because most people in this audience probably are familiar with this. I may start with the flag variety in, in the three dimensional space. So the set of all lines inside a plane inside the basis. The variety is such choices. And one thing I can do is I can forget various instances of location. So, for instance, if I forget the line, I just am looking at planes inside three dimensional space. And if I forget the plane, and only the plane, I get lines inside three dimensional space. And, that's really cool too. and the last thing I can do is forget both. Uh, and there's no data to use. This is just the Now, connecting these various spaces, I have forgetfulness. Right? I forget some of the data. Right. And these maps are nice bundles. You know, this is P2, and that's a point. So this is the P2 bundle. That shouldn't be surprising. It's the P2 bundle. Um, this is the P1 bundle. Because the line that I'm forgetting is constrained to a lie within the fixed plane, which I'm remembering. I think that's a similar to the one problem. Now, when I have bundles, but when I have projected bundles, one thing I can do is integrate along the fiber and apply concrete duality with the fiber. Okay? Uh, if you've never seen the proper book for it, you should. So, concrete duality on fibers says. That if y going to x uh, in the PK bundle, then I've got a map from the cohomology of y to the cohomology of x, but I have to shift the degree uh, by minus two. This is the, called the proper push forward. I also have a, a pullback, which is degree to the so what I do to this setup is I apply the cohomology functor and I get some sort of algebraic setup. I get into the system of ranks. And I'm not going to describe to you exactly what you get. First, I'm going to describe to you you get for a variant. So it's something from which you can derive what you get for This variant people have talked about a lot already. So algebraically, I can start with the ring R, which is the polynomial ring in three terms. Has an action of the symmetry of the three. And between these rays, I now have, if you thought of these as cohomologies, I have a pullback map in cohomology, which is just the inclusion of rings. And I have a forward map. Okay, this is a system of, of things. So the inclusion of the ring homomorphisms. The push forward but not on. Um, and so what I get, I'm going to call this one DS with a partial this time, DT, T, B from S to S3, T to S3, S3, 
very easy to define as mass. The S of F is F minus S F over alpha S, so alpha S is F one minus S two. And um, it's not so hard to see that if you take a polynomial here, the numerator is going to have invariant. The denominator is anti invariant. So the ratio is invariant. And you actually get a polynomial on a fraction. So this thing lives in the S. And also, the S of G is zero if G was already symmetric. Because when I do, the first thing I do is anti symmetric. In very similar fashion, D S3 of F is the sum. Elements of S3, I first anti symmetrize F by applying the F weighted by the sine map, and then I can divide by the canonical anti symmetric monomial. And the monomial. Again, you get a monomial. How does this story relate to this story? So, the end of this story, if I kill the ideal. Generated by positive degrees of the polynomials, then I get a finite dimensional ring everywhere. Well, the covariant, and that's the cohomology. Uh, this stuff you're going to start with equivariant cohomology instead, and that's that's um, slightly Any questions? So, the usual viewpoint on no oxygen. I can define this element ds inside the endomorphism ring of R. And what I do to get this endomorphism of R is that I apply ds to get a symmetric polynomial, and then I include it. And I'm just defining ds. Okay. Well, let me call that composition ds because it lives in a different null space. Um, this is the usual Damasur operator. And the theorem of Damasur. Is that this map from like the previously defined algebra to the functions um, gives me the subalgebra of all the new maps, which is generated by these guesses. It also tells me that if I want to understand um, sort of the operator corresponding to the most element given here, that this is actually just. Um, I get by applying a sequence of simple reflections associated uh, a sequence of simple reflections associated to a reduced expression for the long side. Okay, it's not obvious that if I apply DS and T and the S are the ones. So that's kind of the groups there. And now I want to study not just you know their back, their back, their back, and their back. I want to study all paths of this graph. And the goal of studying all paths around this graph is that I can start here and go there, and maybe I can get something which more double coast Um One of the goals of the study of Aaron's expression in the first place is to find resolution of singularity for cheaper varieties. And now I'm describing everything in this elementary fashion using temperature operators. What I really want to do is study resolution of singularities of cheaper varieties for um, double coast sets, and, and this, these problems are intimately related. So my definition of the Milcoxer version of this story. So this is the um, subcategory of vector spaces objects I, which I think of as Ri, the vector space of invariant polynomials under under these reflections, um, generated by the various put forward maps. Uh, J and by the inclusion maps. Okay. So generated by both push forwards and pull backs. It's not obvious that this is a basis given by that first. What I want to now discuss is why the relations in this category follow from earlier relations. How am I doing that? Um, 10 minutes. That's not right. Um, okay. So observe that all of our relations 
and the box it out like Come from our local workplace. In the box of the You should be like me. So the yes, squared is zero was our quadratic relation for the contract. And what that's saying in terms of method between gradients is that if I apply the demonstrator operator and then include, and then apply the demonstrator operator and then include, that this composition is zero. But indeed, if you look at this circle piece right here, so this is saying that the demonstrator operator um, associated to the sequence and he said s he said s and he said it's zero but indeed if i just look at the circle sequence just s and he said s that's already zero because i said that the demonstrator operator is in the temperaturization and it kills things that are already set so this actually just chunk down the side it's just you know take zero and then most composes that's a little bit easy, but here's something really non trivial. It's the braid relation. So, the braid relation in the usual Dempster algebra follows from four braid relations in the cosmic. Four more. Yes, the S is yes. So now I'm back to this picture over here. The yes, SDS yes, is boom, 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 on the of six magnets. And TSP is easy to pass. What I'm going to do is I'm going to slowly traverse my way across this board. And the most interesting thing I'm going to do is to say that this path is equal to this path. I'll talk about that in a second. Once I've made it to this path, so the crossing over these rectangles is, is an easy thing to do. So let me first talk about sort of this path. This path. So this path is basically saying that if I start at symmetric polynomials and I include it into S invariant polynomials and I include it into R, that's the same thing as including it into T invariant polynomials and including it into R. Or in other words, pull back and goes with pull back is pull back. Okay, and this gives you the relation of like ST, I should put the other direction. Okay, so this is the pullback from those pullbacks to the back. And then here, yeah, push forward from those push forward. So these I call the, the up up um, and the down down rate relations. And they're kind of tricky. But the interesting thing is this cell and this cell, I isolate this one. This first one says that if I start an RX and if I go along this thing, what I'm doing is I'm going down, I'm going to include it into R, projecting into RT, and including into R, and then projecting into R S again. That, that's the same thing. And projecting to all the invariants and then including it. That these are equal. Okay. Or in other words, uh, the demo operator associated to when he said, uh, sorry, S, and he said P, and he said S is the same as going from S to everything and that S. This is a complication you can do, it's not so hard actually. Um, so I want to say that sort of this is an equivalent to the two ways to get over now. Right? Some people just go straight up and back down. We call that the higher. Mm -hmm. Some people just take a switch back that stays low and kind of wakes its way around now. And then the lower thing. Okay. This is what we call the switch back relation. And the statement is that you know, you, I'll take the road, or you take the low road, and I'll take the high road. It gets gotten in at the exact same time as the low road. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this is the 
we all have problems with a lot of women in relation to them. Like, I think I did the wrong point, right? That is the fastest way when we stop it, but that's not what we want. We'll go over to stat. Um, <laughs> Okay, so now I can say the awesome theorem that I promised. All this work is going to come from the top. And so um, I'm going to describe this theorem in the language of the Nocoxeter version, but this, the singular Nocoxeter version is just the star version. So I uh, look at the no coxeter. This has a presentation. I've already described the generators of this presentation. We can talk about all the relations. So we've got the quadratic relation, which says that if I start at IS, I go down and I go back up. That is the My is empty set. We saw that just a minute. But if you include and then anti symmetrize, that should be zero. And of course, the, the uh, singular version of this is like if you include an anti symmetrize, that should just be the identity. Um, in webs, it says that if you take a bygone where you split and then merge again, uh, this is that's what it is in the spectrum. B is down, down, and up, up. So if I start with I, then I add S, and then I add T, that's the same thing as starting at I and adding T and adding S. <laughs> um, in webs, this works one of the two different kinds of relations. One of them is an associativity relation, that there's two different ways to merge three things into one big column, and they're equal. Um, Actually, but if S and T are distant, it basically tells you that it gives you the distant computation function. It doesn't matter which you merge first. This or that. And so these are two different examples of down and down relations, and above relations are the same thing up and down. See if I'm now is just too shadow down there. You know, it's time to avoid taking more space on I. So. There. Um, and then the third is the switch back relation. So there's the one switch back relation for each irreducible uh, finite coxeter group. And each pair, S and T, in simple reflections with T not equal to W0 S. And the switchback relation is an equivalence between two different things. So one is the T at the maximal parabolic of the S. I go up to everything by adding S there, and then I remove the T. And this is a reduced expression for the double coset which contains the longest element of my parabolic system. Oh my God. But then there's another reducing question for this thing, which is the low road, which removes ads, removes ads, removes ads, and switch backs to whatever. And it's the equivalence between two different reducing expressions for this long element. These can be quite complicated and very long in, in like type E8 4. Very long. But if I say it's pretty short, there's again two kinds of switchbacks. So if I start missing the simple reflection here, I merge everything, and then I take away some other simple reflection. And um, for this version, I'm going to assume that able to be is less than n. That this is the same thing as this picture. Split, merge, split, merge. I'm just not going to bother me when you ask this. Can you say that these problems for 
This is anytime I drop lenses, I get. So the same What do you mean one for each block of the first one? Yeah, so for Fn, for F capital N, it is symmetric with the similar function as A and the similar function as B, this is the switchback function. As A and B vary, I'm choosing different similar functions. Um, and there's also the switchback mode can also be due uh, this. That's also a switchback. It's a very important switchback. What do you like add and remove and jump? I mean, do you add and remove eventually every? No, I can tell you that's 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 oh. what I have time at the end. So the same thing is that there's this cool list of new things, and these are the regulations. Okay. All the regulations that you know and love are actually consequences of these crazy things in the It's completely weird and new stuff, but very intense combinatorics. 